Going into this raid tier, for the first time since the final tier of Omega and Stormblood, I did not have a static. I was alone, because nobody wanted me and I'm a loser, but that's besides the point. The point here is, I had to party find this tier. I was a normal pug player, doing what I can to get through the fights with people. So let's talk about my experience and opinions on each of the fights. P9S was a pretty fun fight, but everyone knows the memes by now. Limit cut, limit cut, limit cut. If your group can get past the limit cut, it's a clear. And honestly, that seems pretty accurate. Levin Strike walls so many groups, and it doesn't help there's so many different strategies. We have Kryl, Oppo, JP. Any Mario Kart based strat is the correct one, by the way. Week 3 Reclay, I did JP strat, and it does not feel good to do at all. But honestly, the hardest part from what I see in Party Finder was getting through Marshallist. Basically, every Limit Cut party would die to Marshallist every other pool. So the issue wasn't even Levin Strike itself usually, just a general struggle with the high speed of the fight. But that's something I feel is pretty specific to this tier. The speed of most of these fights just feels way higher than normal. Like even comparing these fights to P8S, which would be the hardest fight so far, these fights are mostly faster. P9S is definitely slow at points, mostly the start of it. Once it gets going, it goes pretty fast. Like getting out of Lemon Strike, you immediately have to check what dual spell is being cast. Then before, Martialist is just a lot at once. Generally though, I like this fight. There's enough to have to pay attention to, but it very much does feel like the first fight of a tier. Hard enough for a third tier, but easy enough for a first fight. I do feel this was the best intro fight for Pandemonium, though I do find Beast to be very... weird? Maybe it was just meant to be a mechanic to signal the halfway point of the fight, since it really does feel like the exact middle. Even if when you check timers it isn't, it feels like it. Limit Cut 2 is weird though, it's based on proximity for both the number base and the damage of the stack. The mechanic just feels out of place for what everything else is. Beast is weird because it is so one and done. This is weird because it's just... weird to be here. And then the boss seemingly gives up afterwards? All he does is spam dual casts afterwards. If there's something else before Enrage, I've not seen it. Yeah, I don't know, pretty fine fight, but plenty of weirdness. What isn't fine is P10S, the worst fight in the entire game. I stand by this statement, and I will continue to stand by it. It's not Party Finder, it isn't their strategies, though one platform is a cancer, it's this entire fight. I don't really know anyone who has a middling opinion on this fight. You either are insane and think this fight is great, or you despise it. In E9S, there's the platform phase of it. That section gives me legit anxiety attacks. I felt genuine, legitimate fear and suffering when that phase came up. And yet P10S is worse. Worse than crushing anxiety. Nothing about this fight feels right, correct, or anything. The main thing I feel shows this best is harrowing hells. Every party tank limit breaks. Genuinely, honestly, how do you do this legitimate? I have not watched Statics do this mechanic, but I do not understand. It hits harder than literally Athena in P12S. There is no mechanic, no damage in the entire rest of this tier that makes me even slightly afraid. Harrowing Hells? Just impossible. Anytime I've seen any party try to clear without tank LB3, it's a wipe. Tank dies, tank doesn't stand in front, Healers can't keep up with the raid-wide damage, it just never works. Ever. And then getting that far is just a chore. Limit Cut here was a meme again, but it wasn't that bad to prog through from what I felt. But it does have the issue this entire fight has, is the speed. This fight feels like it was tuned for ultimate. There's a huge pause between every, like, active bit, but the active bits are just non-stop speed. Demonic Cell Towers and the Holy he does at the same time, there is just no time to process it. I did top. I cleared top. That has some very fast points with needing to process a lot of info all at once. Cells and Holy is faster. You have to just process everything immediately. Delaying the cast of the Cells and the Holy by even half a second would reduce the difficulty of the mechanic by half. Legitimately, 
that much just for half a second more leeway, I just cannot. The main issue in this fight, besides Towering Hells, is Demonic Bonds 3. You're struggling to get into positions and heals and having to process debuffs at the same time. Then you have to wait for the boss to show you if you have a left or a right dodge. And then you have like two seconds to get into position. It's not enough time. And the precision, oh my god, the precision. The size of the AoEs are so mean. The spreads, they're huge. The stacks, they're tiny. And that's why one platform for bonds is so bad too. But like most stuff, if you shield enough, people can survive stacks without the full group. Even in P11S, if a stack only has three people, they can live. Here in P10S, if you only have three, you just die. It doesn't matter, you just die. A criticism of this tier is how many body check mechanics there are, that basically everything is a body check. If you have less than 8 players alive, more people will die. And generally, I disagree with this criticism. I understand it, I even agree that it's true with dual cast in 9, everything in 11. I just disagree with it being bad or such. In P10S, I agree completely. That sucks. That's lame. This is awful. I do not want to ever do this fight again. But I have to. I want to upgrade my gear at least a bit. So every week I have to go back into this horrid fight just for a book and maybe some upgrades. This sucks. I don't want to be in here ever again. Oh, and the Dragoon changed the patch made with jump and high jump? Guaranteed, this fight is why. I don't think it was needed per se. I've benefited from the changes even, but it was definitely this fight that caused it. Though speaking of P11S, it's E11S but better. E11S had three elements to it, but P11S only has two. I think this works better. It goes at a much more chill speed. It has enough moments of high speed to be fun. After how fast 10 is, how bad 10 is, 11 is a really, really fun change of pace. It's just really solid, but ruined by Party Finder. Why do we need three different strategies for split into light parties? We have group one close, group two far. Both groups on the same side, but one group loses uptime. And we have the correct answer, east and west all. Every mechanic that has a split to it is solved by spreading east and west, right and left for light stream. Why are we overcomplicating things and making people run further for no benefit? Literally no benefit. The mechanics work the exact same way regardless of who goes where. So why make who goes where this whole complicated thing? One group plants west, one east, and you never have to think about your positioning beyond what the mechanic is. The one weird thing I've seen is Dark and Light having multiple strats. Kindred seems the simplest if having a bit of a learning curve, but then there's Uptime Kindred. It's a whole one GCD game, which seems pointless. But after doing it myself, it would have been way better if Party Finder learned this strat from the start. It is simpler to understand while having the same starting positions. I've also seen there's a strat where you go based on the color of your tether. I think it's called like Kevin strat or something. It's just very bad. Like why do I need to check my color and who I'm partnered to? Kindred automates everything. Tanks go northwest, healers southeast. DPS just do what their tether says to do. Your positions are set. And with Uptime Kindred, you never have to do anything but rotate clockwise from your spot. No needing to worry about direction. I, I don't know. Some people swear by it for reasons. But yeah, no, this fight is pretty legit. I like it. I feel like it should be the first fight of the tier in terms of difficulty, but then 10 would be like the 12th fight because it's harder than 12. Speaking of P12S, we have P12S. This is another one that people want to massively overcomplicate for no reason or just don't know what to do. Para 1 is simple, but even more simple with doing the tank invuln strat. A strat I've seen zero tanks do correctly. Typical waymarks have an A in the north at the corners of the four northern rectangles. C is on the corners of the southern four. This is not where the tanks are supposed to stand. They should be standing closer to Athena because the middle ads are closer to the middle of the arena than they are to the markers. The clones are not centered to the rectangle sections, so if someone is even one step too far toward mid, 
you could end up getting a laser to the face because the tanks refuse to stand in the correct spot. I do not know how every tank seems to not realize this, but every single time a laser has nuked the entire party, it was the tank's fault, not anyone else's. Para 2, people try to overcomplicate more. Pacebin strat is all players orientate north. DPS check for their tether partner counterclockwise. Support go clockwise. But there's also this Yuki strat that does not do this. The DPS priority in Yuki strat is southwest, northeast, southeast, northwest, northeast. If that sounds nonsense, yes it is. The justification is you're going based on the ads and the color tethers, but so is Pastebin. It makes positioning way more complex than go clockwise. You have to go clockwise, check the tether, then follow it to the other side, wherever that is. As a DPS, I go northwest, southwest, and rarely southeast. I don't have to be ready to run to every spot in the arena aside from the tethers. And the Yuki Strat excuse works for figuring out your positions for paste bin. So yeah, no. Speaking of tethers though, people really like making it harder on tower people. Stand near the cardinal marker, not point it outward toward the tower people. You can stand right next to ABCD. So para 1 people stand on the marker for no reason, and para 2 people avoid it. Luckily the rest of the fight seems pretty set in stone for mechanics, and honestly it's pretty fun. The speed is good, the tricks she pulls are tricky, and Super Chain is just nice to deal with. It's just generally fun. Though Super Chain A can be a lot to visually process until you have done it enough times. And the fact that there's a possible 16 patterns of movement. Once again though, limit cut. People do not understand that you must stand at the wall. Not two steps off the wall, at the wall. This is a fight that really pushes the idea that people only learn strategies and not why those strategies are put into place. They don't learn the mechanic, they learn the movements that they get wrong because they don't understand why they go where they go. Similar to Para 1 and tank positioning. Afterwards though we have P12S Part 2. This fight is so boring. After all the speed of the tier up to this point, this fight is so goddamn slow. Which is kind of a blessing for classical and caloric, but god this fight is so boring. The only speedy bit is the end of Classical with the tentacle drops, which, again, shows people don't understand mechanics, just random positioning. So many lasers pointed in random directions, people running all over... And then Caloric is Caloric. I don't know. It takes a bit to get through, but god. As of writing this, dealing with people who don't understand basic things despite getting to part 2, with the fight being boring, and the general pain of having to re-clear every week? I burned out. Maybe after writing this I'll go back in, but I'm on Pangenesis proc and I just don't want to go back. I'm just done. I've been so busy, so burned out, and basically so depressed I can't bring myself to go back in. I went from intending to clear week one if parties allow, to just giving up. I wanted to go through this to give like my experiences with Party Finder and like, give people hope. And like, yeah, I almost did get through. I did almost get through this tier completely in Party Finder. And many people do. But I just can't anymore. I'm so broken down from so many different angles. I don't know anymore. Maybe I need a break. Who knows? Right now, I can't do it. I just don't have time or motivation. Down at ending, but that's just how this went. I'm used to disappointing everyone. Special thanks to all of my patrons. Extra special thanks to Eamon Al Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Benjamin Rice, Bergy, Karsten Wayward, Ethan W, Fraser97, Jeremy Abbott, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Mizella, Shayna, Shimmering Blaze, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Take care, may the power of Anadid Hogs lay waste to your enemies.